let's go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I appreciate that you made it to be in this room at nine o'clock in the morning, because in Spain it's not obvious to start a meeting at nine o'clock, so I appreciate your discipline. Uh, so I assume that those of you who made it this morning at nine o'clock are fresh in mind and eager to learn from this panel where we are going. Uh, I'm glad to welcome you to this uh, session this morning. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Weissenberg. I'm director in the European Commission, responsible inter alia for space, security and earth observation. I'm honored to be part of this Congress, but I'm still more honored that I have so many distinguished panelists next to me. And the motto of this Congress is bringing space closer to the people. And this motto could be, as we say in German, a leitmotiv. I apologize for the word, but leitmotiv did enter into different languages like rucksack and kindergarten. So this is one of the three words entering in non-German languages. So this could be a leitmotiv for those who are responsible for space policy. So congratulations to the organizers of uh, this uh, Congress and congratulations to those who did choose the title for this plenary session. And the title of this plenary session is Operational Earth Monitoring Systems, Challenges for 2015, Actions Required Today. And I think the person who chose this title did balance carefully every word. And nearly every word would merit a separate panel. So thank you very much for this title. And I think we should simply choose this title as a sort of roadmap for the next 60 minutes. So you have expectations, I have expectations. And I think my job is to do my utmost to find an answer to some of the questions which have been outlined. And the critical answer, number one, is quo vadis earth observation. <laughs> earth observation quo vadis on a regional scale and quo vadis on a global scale. And we have to identify for you the operational challenges lying ahead of us and what needs to be done to be ready in time. So thank you very much for joining us this morning. And I'm extremely pleased to have colleagues next to me who know much more about this fascinating file than myself. But before I introduce to you colleagues, I have to tell you something from the Regie. The Regie told me that there is a fish circulating in the room called audience evaluation. In other words, you can benchmark the chairman and the panelists after 60 minutes, and you can tell the regie afterwards if we have done a good job or not. And once you have filled out this fish, there is a box somewhere, I don't know where, and you can drop it into the box. So now to our panel. Um, next to me on my left is Mrs. Wood. Mrs. Wood is from NOAA, and she is not only from NOAA, she is director of the GEOS program. And let us start with uh, Mrs. Wood, and then afterwards <coughs> colleagues will join her. Mrs. Wood, the floor is yours. Before you take the floor, please do me a favor. We have 60 minutes to go, which means we have to divide the 60 minutes in some slots. Don't exceed 8 to 10 minutes because the audience wants to talk to us, and I'm interested to learn as much as possible from the audience as well. So those of the panelists who exceed the 10 minutes get already a negative benchmark in the famous Fiche d'Evaluation. Mrs. Wood, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I feel confident that I can finish my remarks in 60 minutes. <laughs> 
The, um, uh, my role on the panel today is to give you an update on the Global Earth Observation System of Systems activities within the United States of America. And that is uh, indeed a challenge, but I can hit some high points, and hopefully that will uh, promote subsequent discussion. As I hope you realize, the United States is firmly and fully committed to uh, pursuing the Global Earth Observation System of Systems. Why is this? It's because it's essential, it's necessary, it is fundamentally required in order for us uh, to be successful in leveraging, exploiting, and, and ultimately more broadly benefiting from our own Earth observation systems uh, within our country and recognizing their real and continuing limitations, it is necessary for us to work effectively within the global environment. The GEOS activity began in name just a few years ago. The underlying principles and the need for integration or collaboration, shall we say, and cooperation has been recognized for decades. And certainly for the last 20 years, there has been a very aggressive, very very well-intended well and very collaborative process going on bilaterally and multilaterally. However, there were limitations inherent in such activity. The limitations were the, uh, were the um, missions, the mission responsibilities of individual agencies and ministries. And at some point, in order to truly go beyond that, we must have higher level attention and the political recognition. Within the U.S. government, uh, we have worked, as we have worked internationally, we have worked uh, more recently in a formal way across more than 20 agencies in the U.S. government who either provide Earth observations or use Earth observations or wish to use Earth observation data in a more systematic manner. While the early stages of this activity called in the U.S. the Integrated Earth Observation System, IEOS, the early stages focused on stating principles and general approach and the character of cooperation and the importance of cooperation. As we move now into uh, the uh, third and fourth and fifth years of activity, the focus is on demonstrations of merit, and enabling us to realize the real benefits of the integrated Earth observations. We believe, we've experienced, that the integration of Earth observations does not happen spontaneously. It requires work. It requires concerted effort. Even if we are successful in a couple of projects, it does not mean the effort will continue. It has to become a necessary way of doing business. So we have highlighted for ourselves several activity areas that we call near-term opportunities. And the part of the definition of that is these are, are uh, areas in which uh, we can show some measurable results within five years, preferably sooner because it is difficult to keep attention for very long with busy people and demanding programs. I show you some uh, candidate lists here. The first three bullets, for these we have developed a national uh, plan. And the plans are available just now on the internet. National Integrated Drought Information System, Improved Observations for Disaster Warnings, Air Quality Assessment and Forecast System. You will see short reports on each of these on our uh, website that describe a, an approach for moving forward across U.S. government agencies and within an international context, because in fact, these map very nicely to the societal benefit areas uh, 
that the over 60 governments, 65 governments now, and increasing daily, uh, to which we have all agreed. So I, I won't go into the details of this, but I mention those specifically, and I'll talk a little more about the first one. The latter three pu bullets are examples of areas that we are working to better define and will focus on within the U.S. government and with our academia and industry uh, over the next few years. To these, I would add the broader integrated ocean observing system. If there is a, there's pro perhaps few better examples of an area in which we must embrace IEOS and, in fact, a global Earth observation system of systems approach in order to realize substantial benefits because no one agency, no one country, in fact, owns sufficient resources observing the system from the bottom of the ocean to the, the view from space. None of us has uh, sufficient um, budget, sufficient control, sufficient charter to, uh, to do this by ourselves. It's a beautiful opportunity for a, I think, a very bold collaborative effort. I would also uh, identify a biodiversity and ecosystems combined with the implications for public health. So you can expect to see those specific areas looked at in the next uh, couple of years from a U.S. perspective and, and hopefully um, in, a, in some major international activities as well. Cross-cutting each of these are activities that, in fact, have been uh, initiated at the intergovernmental geo level, a, a comprehensive inventory of contributing systems, a portal, or I would say really a series of portals to provide ease of access and location of relevant systems of Earth observation data, and a, a, a technology-based uh, capability geonetcast to leverage existing data distribution capabilities uh, in order to allow us both to demonstrate the value of integrated Earth observation data in several areas, but also to, um, to learn, uh, to learn as we try to broaden the applicability of Earth observation data. Finally, if we look at this last view graph, it expands just at a little bit of detail on the underlying elements of our effort to realize a national integrated drought information system. I would say that this is not something that we sat around a committee and came up with. Actually, the demand for such a capability came from the governors of our western states in the United States who continue to deal with a, um, a growing uh, water management problem, water distribution problem, and, uh, and, and trying to mitigate the uh, the challenges of periodic drought. So we have a number of systems that provide data that can be used to both detect drought, in some cases to perhaps um, begin to predict uh, the onset of drought. But in fact, we need much more. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of the data that we need. We need easier access to the data. They need to be intercomparable so that, comparable so that you can draw uh, reliable results and conclusions from which we can make policy decisions, and that ultimately is what we're, we're shooting for here. I'll leave that as an example and look forward to the rest of the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. Thank you for respecting especially uh, the time limit. So you set the benchmark already. Let's <coughs> move immediately to Volker Liebig, Director of Earth Observation in ESA, and I'm sure Volker, he is still a, where he is international civil servant, but he still has a German passport, so it should not be too difficult to respect the timeline. Volker. Well, thank you. Um, some of you have already experience with that, so I will try. <laughs> <laughs> so the title of this uh, plenary session is um, Operational Earth Monitoring Systems, Challenges for 2015 and Actions Required. So, uh, what I will try uh, is to start with um, what is GMES and uh, to come then from that because this is uh, beyond uh, others the European contribution uh, to GEO, GEOS, 
um, and I will try to explain that. So, uh, from the kickoff uh, of GMES, the global uh, uh, monitoring system for environment and security, uh, and this kickoff meeting was 1998, where the idea was born in Baveno, which is located at a wonderful uh, lake, uh, the Lago Maggiore in Italy, which inspired, obviously, the participants of this meeting. Uh, it was clear that uh, a very important um, building block of an information system to support European policies uh, in facilitating a decision process in critical domains like environment, climate, uh, but also in security areas, and we understand uh, here the civil security areas, um, that an, a fundamental building block of this information system must be satellites because we tackle global questions and we need, uh, uh, we need uh, satellites to get the answers. So uh, what do we expect in 2015? Uh, which will be about the time where, when we have uh, our first generation of uh, GMES uh, operational, is that the services, the users get an easy and more harmonized access uh, to uh, usefully processed information. Uh, we hope that the core services which will be implemented uh, within uh, GMES will also create spin-off services and databases of public but also private interest. And uh, we expect to see uh, a fleet of European, and this includes Canadian, uh, because uh, uh, the Canadians are part of the European family in terms of space, as many of you know, they are an associated member of ESA. Uh, that this fleet of satellite uh, funded from ESA, national member states programs, and the European Commission um, can be jointly exploited. ESA has been chosen in Europe uh, to be the implementing agency for the space infrastructure, and this includes also the coordination of the access uh, and <coughs> to the national missions and third-party missions, uh, missions uh, also outside Europe, because we will need all these information sources to feed the services, because the services are in the center of uh, what we plan in GMES. The next slide, please. Um, so, how far is GMES compliant with GEO GEOs? You know, uh, in March uh, 2005, some 26 uh, nations have decided uh, to go into this GEO GEOs process. We have now a GEO office in uh, Geneva, which uh, gives um, a focus point for the activities. And uh, there is also a work plan uh, um, which has been developed, a short-term work plan from 2007 to 2009, and a long-term planning. And on a, on a level below that, uh, Helen Wood has already mentioned that uh, GEO GEOS has uh, identified so-called so, uh, societal benefit areas uh, like uh, disasters, health, climate, water, weather, agriculture, etc. So it's nine altogether. And uh, so uh, the uh, uh, question is, what is the response to that? And I said already that GMES is, is, is not only an, a part of GEO. GMES was originally planned uh, also to guarantee a certain European independence, because if you need data for uh, decision making, it's important that you have means to come to your own opinion, to come to an own judgment. But of course, it's also the basic element and the entry point, the European entry point for international contributions to GEO and GEOS, uh, which provides the organizational and political frame on, on the global level. Um, I mentioned already the um, work program of GEO GEOS, and there is another organization, which many of you know, which is CEOS, uh, and uh, Conrado, Varotto here to my left is the president of CEOS uh, this year, and we will meet in November in Buenos Aires uh, 
on to the plenary, uh, in the plenary of CEOs to discuss the answer of the space uh, agencies who have uh, Earth observation programs to the requirements of this work plan of GeoGeos. And uh, there is a, a part in CEOs which is called Strategic Implementation Team, SIT, and ESA is chairing this for two years, and so um, I'm the chairman at the moment. And uh, a lot of people uh, all over the world from the space agencies are working on this response, and we will discuss um, the answer to this work plan, to the uh, areas where we can contribute with our space infrastructure. We will discuss this and probably also decide this in the next plenary in Buenos Aires. And a central part of that is the idea to form what is called in, the, in our jargon virtual constellations. Uh, that means that we want to use uh, different satellites which exist, for example, for land observation or uh, for um, sea surface monitoring or for other applications, uh, that we try to form virtual constellations with contributions from NOAA, from JAXA, from the Russian Space Agency, from ESA, and all the other participants who have uh, elements which could fit uh, into these constellations, and uh, there will be a, a, a kind of an approval process within CEOs for uh, partners in this constellation idea. Uh, one has to, uh, this has to be discussed in more detail. One has to probably uh, subscribe to a certain data access uh, policy, which is still to be defined by GEO, GEOs for the services. And uh, uh, if you uh, qualify for these criteria, then you can become part of such a virtual constellation. We have, uh, to become a bit more concrete, identified four areas, uh, which is land surface imaging, uh, atmospheric composition, ocean surface topography, and precipitation as the first of these virtual constellations, uh, which shall give the answer, and the answer means de facto send data access on uh, predefined conditions to uh, services which will be developed to, uh, to respond to the questions uh, in the societal benefit areas of GeoGeos. Uh, so this is a process which is ongoing in Europe uh, um, and integrated into the uh, global discussion on GeoGeos, and I think we are on a very good way. Also GMES is progressing very well. Also, thanks to the European Commission and this uh, good cooperation we have developed meanwhile. Uh, my last sentence is uh, uh, directed to the need also in future for high-level political support, because all this, what we discussed, GEOs, but also uh, CEOs, um, is built on um, contributions from uh, national agencies, contributions uh, from uh, international organizations. Uh, so it's not top-down, it's bottom-up. And for these bottom-up decisions, we need the political support in each of the partner countries in order to achieve what we wanted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Volker. I liked especially your remark on Canada. I must say, as a civil servant of the European Commission, I'm not so sure if, if I can subscribe to it, but we, be, we, we belong to different institutions in Europe. Uh, thank you very much. Now, um, can I hand over to Yuri Nozenko, Deputy Head of Roscosmos. Yuri, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Уважаемые дамы и господа, задачи, которые ставит перед собой Россия, хорошо совпадают с теми задачами, которые ставят государства и организации по дистанционному зондированию Земли. Coincide very well with what international organizations and nations are, are trying to do on their own. Для России это исследование и разработка природных ресурсов Земли, предотвращение при этом экологического и экономического ущерба, прогнозирование стихийных бедствий, наводнений, ураганов, землетрясений. 
Uh, so this is a uh, studies uh, and uh, f further exploitation of natural resources, uh, uh, prevention of ecological uh, and uh, natural disasters, uh, and of course uh, uh, the decision of social and economic tasks. состояние спутниковых систем России и планы, которые она имеет, полностью соответствуют этим задачам и представлены на слайде. Uh, the current status of the Russian Earth Observation uh, Satellite constellations, uh, Constellation and uh, its plan for the future uh, respond, equal, uh, respond to these objectives and they're shown on the view graph. In the upper sector, Sputnik Monitor, Resource DK, Resource P. Uh, in the upper uh, part of uh, this view graph, uh, there are natural resources. Uh, uh, the satellites are monitor resource uh, DK and resource P, which are designed uh, for uh, uh, natural resources studies. Эти аппараты создаются по государственной программе, и мы начали сотрудничество по ним уже с ЕАДС, с отдельными государствами, и планируем продолжить эту работу. Потребность так велика, что мы покупаем много снимков у зарубежных государств. Поэтому планируем привлечение средств собственных компаний внебюджетных для создания спутников исследования природных ресурсов Земли на инвестиционном основе. Это спутники в нижнем секторе слайда. Uh, the demand for Earth observation images is so high that uh, in our countries uh, uh, we just have uh, to acquire these images abroad. Uh, but our uh, investors, potential investors, understand the interest in selling that kind of images, uh, so uh, they uh, will co-contribute to uh, the development of satellites, which are shown in the lower part of the view graph. В правом секторе слайда представлена метеорологическая программа. The right sector of the view graph is dedicated to the meteorological program. Мы Благодарны Всемирной метеорологической организации за тесное сотрудничество и использование многочисленных данных метеорологических спутников и хотим отдать свой долг. Thankful to the World Meteorological Organization who helped us in uh, giving us, in uh, providing us with uh, uh, meteorological images uh, and we want to pay this debt. Ежегодно, начиная с следующего года, мы планируем запускать по одному спутнику метеор на солнечно-синхронную орбиту. Для исследования атмосферы, поверхности Земли, и один спутник из них будет океанографическим. Uh, so uh, they will do the studies of atmosphere, of Earth service, uh, one of them uh, will be uh, dedicated to the uh, oceanographic studies. Спутники электро, спутники на геостационарной орбите метеорологического назначения. And the electro satellite series uh, will be placed on geostationary orbit uh, and uh, uh, this is... Uh, uh, these are also meteorological satellites. С точками стояния прежде всего на экваторе в зоне Индийского океана и в окрестности. So uh, their uh, stationary points uh, will be uh, over equator in the Indian Ocean zone. Наконец, спутники специализированного назначения прогноза землетрясений. Uh, uh, finally, Canopus V, uh, these are satellites of, uh, special, uh, for special purpose, earthquake early prediction. Они будут оснащены аппаратурой зондирования ионосферы. They will be equipped with uh, instruments of uh, ionosphere sensing. И здесь надо отметить, что существует много школ 
много направлений научных методов анализа признаков землетрясений. Uh, and here I would like uh, to point out that uh, there exists uh, a lot of uh, different scientific school uh, uh, regarding uh, the um, atmospheric precursors of earthquakes. Их результаты вероятностны, и для того, чтобы повысить их достоверность, необходимо уже сейчас многократное приложение усилий, увеличение усилий наших uh, государств и сотрудничества. And, uh, you know, uh, and the, all these uh, methods uh, deal with probability processes, and uh, that's why I also uh, call for uh, international cooperation in this area. Функционирует французский спутник прогноза землетрясения. На спутнике ресурс ДК мы поставили аппаратуру Арина прогнозирования землетрясений. Uh, there is a French satellite, uh, operational satellite, uh, dedicated to, uh, earthquake, uh, to the search of uh, earthquake quakes, uh, precursors. Uh, uh, the appropriate instrument is installed on board the resource DECA. И в этом направлении, и по всем другим, мы готовы к активному, открытому сотрудничеству с существующими структурами дистанционного зондирования Земли. Это и межагентство, и группа СЕОС, и европейская э, система ГМЕС, структуры в Азии и отдельные страны. And, uh... I would like to say that uh, all these are important areas are worth cooperative efforts, and we are ready and open to cooperate uh, with uh, different uh, nations, with international structures, uh, uh, with the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites, uh, with the European DMS uh, system, and uh, with others. Мы стараемся, with Asia. стараемся внедрить конструктивную работу с системой систем глобального наблюдения Земли. Мы в десятилетний план предложили несколько пилот-проектов, которые будут интересны другим странам, и другие страны могут принять в них участие. Uh, for the 10-year action plan, we uh, uh, suggested, we proposed uh, uh, a series of pilot uh, projects, uh, which I think could be of interest for uh, other participants. Мы считаем, что для функционирования системы глобального наблюдения Земли нужен технический системообразующий комплекс, каким может быть система Геонетсад. And we uh, think that uh, for the establishment of a uh, GEORA system, uh, there, need to be, uh, uh, there is a need for a technical, uh, what we call a uh, uh, forming, system forming uh, complex. Uh, the, the, uh, such a complex could be as what is developed by GEOMETSAT. Russia can take the part of the creation of the Meteo Inform, as part of and a uh, Russian contribution to uh, uh, GOSS could be our, uh, an information system uh, made to inform. Мы понимаем, что нужно, uh, нужен орган координации и управления распространения данных по техническим средствам. And we understand that there should be uh, governing bodies both uh, for uh, data distribution and management of technical issues. Отсюда следует необходимость более глубокой проработки алгоритма функционирования системы глобального наблюдения Земли, создания ее устава. And uh, here uh, a need is uh, clear for in-depth analysis of uh, the system management, uh, so of uh, um, drafting uh, what could be a charter of uh, the system of systems. Решение, создание механизма финансирования организации для решения организационных и технических вопросов. And a funding mechanism should be uh, established, uh, which will be used for uh, uh, resolving technical and organizational uh, issues. 
и в итоге э, завершить э, путем, э, работ, э, эту работу путем создания международно договорной базы. And in conclusion, an uh, cooperative uh, legal basis should be established for uh, this uh, work. Эта работа трудная, большая, и Россия будет принимать конструктивное участие в ней. A lot of work is still ahead. It's a, it's a challenge, and uh, um, what can I say that is Russia is willing to participate in this work and will be and will be there. Разрешите поблагодарить за внимание и выразить сожаление, что мне трудно получить похвалу от господина Вайсенберга за время выступления. And so thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm sorry uh, that I won't be able to uh, uh, to hear good words from uh, Dr. Weisenberg because I uh, I'm not I'm out of the time limit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nazenko. Yes, it's true, you are out of time limit. You exceeded your time limit, but you get a credit point because you had this consecutive translation exercise. Uh, okay, but languages are important. I continue to believe it would be a mistake if everybody would simply speak English. Uh, but that's another debate for another panel. Um, so, uh, colleagues to my left, um, we still have 20 minutes to go. Do the audience a favor. Be as concise, as precise as possible in order to be able to collect questions from the audience. So, the next speaker on my list is Conrado Varotto, well known to you, CEO of the National Commission for Space Activities in Argentina and current chairman of CEOS. Conrado, you have the floor. Okay, I, I'm, I'm trying to go very short. So I will not speak, I will just read. Uh, according to the, for this panel, we were asked by the coordinator to provide the answer to two questions. What is the role and relevance of CEOs in the context of GEOs? And the second one which was more or less at what concrete steps will be needed from CEOs to achieve the system of system at international level. Now, let's go to the first question. CEOs is qualified to act as a space arm of GEOs for the delivery of adequate and timely space information for the social benefit area of GEO, and this is the key point. Why? It is the main international coordination mechanism dedicated to the harmonization of civil earth observation satellite programs with 20 years of experience. It unites government providers of satellite earth observation missions with users to enhance the utility and benefits of this data to operational and research community across the world. It joins high-level representatives from the main space agency in the world that have a program on Earth observation, most of which belong to, as, to, uh, to member states of GEO. And it has as associate member international agency users, which are also participating in organization of GEO. Regarding to the second question, Today's situation is that the Earth observation program are driven by a variety of national and regional needs and capacities. The lack of common requirement has led to lack of continuity of information supply and lack of consistencies of technical performance and application of observations. In order to provide a response to this shortcoming, CEOs is working on the virtual constellation concept which was already explained here by Dr. Libby. The CEOS virtual constellation concept is proposed as the basis for a process aimed at addressing shortcomings in the international planning process, a process that does not undermine the independence of the individual agencies. In its meeting, CEOS seat 19 meeting in La Jolla uh, in last September, it was set the basis for an initial process paper which defined the guidelines for the elaboration of a constellation proposal, the necessary documentation, the approval procedure. And second, it starts the elaboration of four prototype constellations, atmospheric composition, ocean altimetry, land surface imaging, and precipitation. There is a key point that we have to keep in mind, and is that during this process, 
in G, in GEO, in CEOs, etc., there are huge agencies like NASA, for example, NOAA, etc., that all together, they today are working in what is considered the integrated system for the United States. You have ESA, which is also a kind of regional space agency where you have a lot of space agencies inside. When we talk about China and Russia, we are talking about almost the same. But we have to be very careful because something new is coming. And we hope that this something new that will be coming and will be part of the CEOs and, and so in this way to contribute to GEO will be regional space agencies arising from regional zones like South America and some other places. And these people certainly will be involved in the CEOs process to, to contribute to GEO. In our opinion, Earth is going on today showing that in 10 years from now, all Earth observation systems will be developed in the frame of geo-geos. The size and deepness of this involvement of each space agency will be mainly tied to the commitment they take with the constellation process. However, this will be tied on how the main four constraints for Earth global observations may be addressed. And in our opinion, these main four constraints are space debris, production and storage of energy, launch costs, and the legal constraint disparities. This matter has been and will be the subject of analysis in most of space forums. And uh, the point is when we will come out with a solution to this. If we come out with a solution to this point, Certainly, CEO's contribution to GEO will be fantastic, and at the end, we will really end with an integrated global observation system, which, in my opinion, was the original idea. Now it's not in that way, but I'm convinced that GEO in 10 years, in, in 10 years from now, it will be really an integrated global Earth observation system. Thank you. How I was in time? Great. I'm, thank you very much, Conrado. I'm sure in the famous audience evaluation report you get a good benchmark. Thank you very much. Now let's move to our Japanese colleague and friend, Mr. Horikawa. Mr. Horikawa is um, director of, executive director of the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency. Mr. Horikawa, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Weisenbach. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased and honored to be here. Uh, before the meeting, I received a couple of questions from uh, Dr. Weisenberg, but before answering uh, questions, I would like to briefly overview the current status of JAXA's Earth observation activities. Desiring to build a secure and prosperous society, JAXA is proposing to implement an integrated observation, monitoring, and warning system using satellite with the highest reliability in the world and world-class capability to effectively provide solutions for the issues of concern to the nation and society. This proposal is based on Japan's basic strategy discussed in Japan's Council for Science and Technology Policy. At the same time, it has defined Japan's national key technology for national importance to integrate marine exploration and earth observation systems. Next chart, please. This view graph show, uh, depicts the integrated system using the key technology in which space-based observations, in-situ observations, integration and analysis of the observation data and data distribution to users are systematically connected as components. To establish such a fundamental system, JAXA provides a space segment as component of the integrated system. Next chart, please. Now, uh, I'd like to uh, answer the first question raised by Dr. Weisenberg. The can Japan's efforts to initiate Sentinel Asia be compared to a national or regional Earth observation system like GMS or IOS? In response to this question, the answer is yes. 
Sentinel Asia it will be comparable to an Asian Earth observation system like GMS or IEOS. Sentinel Asia is the first step in developing an information gathering and warning system for disaster and crisis management in the Asia region. The system is regarded as Japan's key contribution to GEOS. Next chart, please. Oh. Oh, please go back to the first uh, before chart. This is the framework of the Sentinel Asia project. Sentinel Asia is a data sharing project that uses a web-based geographic information system called WebGIS, indicated to disaster management in Asia. When geographical information system data and functionality are made available over the Internet, the system is referred to as a WebGIS. With the WebGIS, users do not need to be uh, expert in sophisticated GIS applications, since the functionality is made available through a regular web browser and an integrated viewer with a simple user-friendly interface. A significant activity of JAXA in the Sentinel Asia project is emergency observation by JAXA's ALOS in the event of a major disaster. ALOS accepts observation requests from Asian Disaster Reduction Center, ADRC, member countries. We are targeting two major disasters in the beginning, wildfire monitoring and flood monitoring. Capacity building for utilizing satellite images for disaster management is also being promoted. The operation will begin in October 2006, at the same time as the commencement of the ALOS regular operation this year. Next chart, please. As shown in the chart, ADRC uses a membership system comprised of 25 member countries in Asia. Our counterparts are the departments in charge of disaster management in the central government. We maintain very close contact with each member country through this network. Next chart, please. The next question is that what are the main bottlenecks to integrating the many and excellent national earth observation systems available in Asia? And are there any practical efforts underway to do that? Uh, the key issues that are obstructing integration of the many and excellent national earth observation systems available in Asia are interoperability and data policy. Existing observation systems are designed and operated independently. It is necessary that we share minimum specifications as a standard for exchanging information among the systems. However, even if useful data are obtained by some organization, the data are sometimes not available to actual users due to the data policy of the data distributor for security or commercial reasons. These issues are also key topics in GEO to achieve GEOs, as you may know. Next chart, please. Uh, Sentinel Asia uses the core infrastructure to share information to resolve the first issue, interoperability by way of WebGIS. We actually have some data nodes in the Asia-Pacific region. The data nodes are connected through the Internet, and the data are integrated through a WebGIS server. This is an image of overlay processing of digital Asia. Data provided by different organizations can be overlaid on a single image. I believe this is one advantage of using WebGIS for data sharing objectives. The data policy represents another issue in sharing information among nations. It is necessary to reach mutual agreement for the shared data policy through international meetings or similar opportunities such as GEO. We can create incentives for sharing data among participating organizations through the data providers to achieve this purpose. As a first step, 
the data policy of participating organizations must be respected, and efforts must be made to find share of data under the existing conditions. The outcome must demonstrate the usefulness of the system and attempt to expand the shareable data, and mutual agreement on the shared data policy must ultimately be reached. This may be an optimistic view, but the process seems to be inevitable. Let's begin to do what we can under the condi existing conditions and strive to reach the next step in the process. This is very important for resolving this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Horikawa. Thank you again for being disciplined. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your patience so far. Now I invite you, I think we can take a couple of questions. Feel free to put any question you may like. Profit from the presence of speakers from the globe. Who is the first one? <laughs> yes, the lady, please. Would you please so nice to identify yourself before putting the question? Uh, would you mind? Would you mind? I don't know if we have a micro. Yeah. If we don't have a micro, would you mind to come to this uh, pupitre, as the French say? I wasn't expecting to be the part of the panel, but <laughs> so I'm Harleen Jolly from RapidEye. I'm not sure if you've heard about RapidEye. It's a commercial geo information provider. That's what we call ourselves. And today we heard about the national perspectives, the agencies and organizations, what you uh, plan to do for the integration of the observation systems. And how do you foresee the commercial companies' input into this, and to what extent? Good question. Thank you very much. I propose, Volker, before you respond, uh, let's collect some more questions. Any other questions from the audience? Yes, please. Very precise question. Any other question in the room? Yes, please. Yes, two pieces of information, sir. What's the role of the United Nations in this process? Yeah. Good question. Thank you very much. A last one? Okay, then let's go. Volker, answer to the lady. Commercial issues. Yes. Uh, Commercial uh, satellite systems uh, are present, are existing in some areas, mainly uh, so far in high-resolution optical uh, areas, but some others are coming up. Rapid Eye uh, is one of them, uh, which is dedicated to certain application areas. Uh, as far as um, GMES and the European contribution to GeoGeos is concerned, uh, we plan to organize access to these uh, systems, to all systems for which we have requirements coming from services which uh, uh, are going to be defined. We have three pilot services. Um, one is a land service, for example, in GMES, and there uh, we have requirements where we also need access to this type of information Rapid Eye has to offer. Uh, in the ESA GMES program, the space component is uh, the access foreseen uh, to a, a lot of missions, including the commercial ones, and we have also, also foreseen some budgets um, to uh, really buy data. I'm aware, but maybe Helen uh, is, is better placed to answer that, that also in the U.S., on the governmental side, so far outside of geo -geos, uh, there is data buy for governmental issues, and uh, I can imagine that also there 
uh, uh, commercial sources of data might be used for the one or the other uh, benefit areas which we have to tackle. Vielen Dank, Mr. Nozenko. Yes, for Sputnik Electro. Sputnik plans to be sent to orbit in 2007. The Electro L is scheduled for uh, launch in 2007. The work that has been done uh, meets uh, the schedule. We hope that they will be completed in time. Hopefully, it will be launched in uh, scheduled time. Helen, can you give an answer to the UN question, please? Oh, well, certainly, I'd be delighted to try. Uh, as some of you know, I was the uh, uh, director of the GEO Secretariat uh, during its uh, first formative two years, and uh, uh, as it was an ad hoc. Organization. So there was enormous interest in, in uh, defining and exploring the, a valuable, mutually valuable relationship with the United Nations agencies. Remember, GEO first and foremost is an association of governments. That is, that is the uh, that was the reason for coming together was to have nations come together, nations who already participate in many, many UN organizations and collaborate there and have for decades. So GEO was a way to come together and say, okay, cutting across all of our activities in the UN, outside of the UN, within our own countries, considering the, the one, this one theme of Earth observations, can we do a better job of investing together? Not in GEO, but within our nations, within our communities, our regions, and cooperatively within the UN organizations where we are working already. So of necessity, we had to ensure that there was a, a strong awareness of our UN collaboration at the same time that the governments are discussing uh, our investment strategies, our goals, and our objectives. Therefore, you'll see when you look at the list of over 43 international organizations that participate in GEO that a very large percentage of those are, in fact, UN entities, the UN Committee on Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, the uh, UN Environment Program, Development Program, uh, the uh, International Oceanographic Commission, the World Meteorological Organization, which is recognized as the example that we want to, to which we aspire across multiple areas. If you look at what WMO has achieved, the nations working together in WMO have achieved in integrated Earth observations and now collaboration in weather modeling, numerical weather prediction, uh, with their efforts to have a truly ensemble approach, if we can do in 10 years what they have accomplished in 50 years in other areas, we will truly be uh, successful in our endeavor, and that requires this, this very strong and rich uh, collaboration as we continue to work within UN agencies. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, I understand now we have to conclude. I have the privilege to conclude. Those of you who know me know that I'm not epic. So give me three minutes uh, to conclude. And uh, don't be surprised, I will conclude with a European flavor. Uh, so I misuse my chairmanship uh, a little bit in order to tell you what our way of thinking in Brussels on this exercise is. And I realized, yes, we are on our way to 2015. 2015 will come anyway. But the question is, what needs to be done before 2015? And I have four small points for you. The first one is, we need more political support. This is something which I retain from the discussion. And if you want 
to gain political support, you need to gain visibility. And we have to explain to the political decision makers that Earth observation is a tool to achieve political objectives. In other words, we have to simplify the message, you the politicians, you get value for money because this tool enables you to take a better decision. Point number one. Point number two. A support politically depends, for the Europeans at least, on the support from the users. So whatever we are doing in terms of Earth observation, the information has to be pulled by the user. And the user identifies the needs for Earth observation. This is important in the sense, if the user is on our side, the political support comes automatically. Point number three, we are investing a lot, regionally, internationally. We are investing in a system or in a system of systems which needs to be sustainable at the end of the day. So one of the key issues for the European Commission is sustainability. If the user is not believing that the system is sustainable, he will not continue to pull the information. And finally, point number four, we discussed about it, we call it a little bit uh, French, la gouvernance, the governance of Earth observation. And I'm not so sure if we have found already now the answer how to optimize our governance. I understand a lot of things need to be done in the different regions and a lot of things need to be done on the global level. A colleague said rightly, there are not too many, a variety of actors. I say always, there are too many loose ends in Earth observation. And we have to have the courage to bring these loose ends together on a regional scale and on a global scale. And in this sense, I think that this panel was a valuable contribution to pave the way ahead. And I understand that we have to maintain the momentum because GMES is not for tomorrow, it is for the day after tomorrow. And I would very much welcome if during the next Congress, I don't know, it is in Hyderabad, this subject could again prominently figure on the agenda. In practical terms, ladies and gentlemen, I understand you get a summary of the different presentations which will, dis will be distributed to you. So thank you very much to the panelists, I appreciate. Thank you for the discipline and thank you to the audience. The session is closed.